This episode is brought to you by Skillshare. After my last video showing dovetail keyed miters for the picture frame, it got me thinking more about machine cut dovetails and how I could utilize them. Then I thought about a breadboard board for bread. The breadboard breadboard. This is a story about that. I started by milling up some walnut and maple scrap to make a simple cutting board. It's a classic combination of contrasting close grain woods that's actually probably a bit overdone, but they're both great woods for cutting boards and I happen to have some of both on hand. After cutting my stock into strips, I cut them all to length and glued up the boards. After the glue was dry, I sent them through the planer to clean up the board. Now, here is where this board starts to get fancy. With a dovetail bit in the router table, I run a piece of scrap that's the same thickness as my board over the bit, cutting the socket for a sliding dovetail. Once I cut one pass, I flip the piece around and run a second pass. That ensures my socket is perfectly centered in the board. Then I took the actual breadboard pieces and ran them over the router. With the sockets cut, I took another piece of scrap and test cut a piece that would be the sliding tails. I'd make two passes and test the fit and sneak up on a tight fit. Once I was confident in my setup, I stood the cutting board on end and ran each end of the board over the dovetail bit on both sides. I'm never sure how tight my sliding dovetails are supposed to be, but I usually err on the side of too tight and try to finesse the fit with hand tools or sandpaper. And while I'm finessing this joint, let me tell you about Skillshare. Skillshare is an online community with thousands of classes, covering dozens of creative and entrepreneurial skills, explore classes in everything from photography and creative writing to marketing, productivity, and more. Premium membership gives you unlimited access to high quality classes from experts working in their fields to help you gain new skills and live your best life. I have been trying to get better at graphic design to help my brand and have a more cohesive brand identity. I've been watching classes from George Bohua on using a grid system when designing logos and how to take a sketch to a finished logo in Illustrator. Look for an updated William Walker Company logo sometime in the near future. Skillshare is also incredibly affordable and an annual subscription is less than 10 bucks a month. Click the link in the description below to get a two month free trial of Skillshare Premium on me. With the joint finessed, I could start to install the dovetailed breadboard. This is a mechanical joint, letting the perpendicular grain orientation move as it is exposed to moisture while keeping the board flat and to mitigate the board cupping over time, so no glue is used. Now, to keep the breadboard from sliding or falling off one day, I wanted to peg the breadboard near the center of the board, so I needed to make some dowels. I found a piece of super straight grained Riftson maple and cut it down to a 3 8 by 3 8 stick. Then went over to my Rubo in progress and straddled my shop made dowel plate over the split top. For this technique to work, you need straight grain or riven wood to prevent the dowel from pretty much exploding as you pound it through the plate. I started pounding the dowel through the biggest hole, then moved on to progressively smaller holes and ended up with these 5 16 inch dowels. It works really, really well, especially if you only need a few dowels and don't have any dowel stock on hand. I marked a spot for two dowels on either end of the board and headed to the drill press. 
This is similar to drawboard breadboards, but instead of offsetting my holes like you would on a tenon, the sliding dovetail is the force that's pulling the breadboard onto the board, so you don't need to offset the pegs like you would in a draw boring application. With my holes drilled, I whittled down the end of a dowel and drove it through the breadboard with a little glue. Then I cut them flush with a flush trim saw. Next, I cut off the excess breadboard and cleaned up the saw marks with a smoothing plane. Pro tip, if you are planing a crossed end grain like this, be sure to chamfer the trailing edge so you don't blow it out as the plane exits the cut. Then I sanded everything up to 220 grit. I chamfered the edges with the block plane. and finished it all with mineral oil. I really think this board turned out pretty unique, and it was a fun idea to play with. The sliding dovetail breadboard breadboard. And just like the last build, if you want to support the channel, I will be auctioning this board off on Instagram, so head over there to check out the details of the auction. Let me know what you guys think of this project in the comments. If you're not already subscribed to this channel, it would really mean a lot to me. And as always, thanks for watching.